From being a world-class dancer, to a high-level martial artist, to teaching himself Spanish, French, Chinese, and Portuguese, to designing his own unique line of merchandise, Mike is the most interesting man I know. I had a chance to spend some time with him to learn how he accomplished so much, so that in hopes you can too. Me and Mike, or Wogu as he goes by, had a great time. This interview is fun. He's a special guest. He's a friend. He's a true inspiration to me with the life that he's created. And at the one point, he even put some martial arts moves on me, but I'm not gonna show you that part, okay? <laughs> so without further ado, enjoy. Every moment is new. Mm -hmm. Every moment is new. That's actually quite profound. Yeah. Even the things that we have, <clears throat> we think we've done before, mm -hmm. it's still all new and the potential to be created. That's just a thought I wanted to open up with. If only we could remember that. If only my charge is to remember that today. So with this new moment, what the cool thing about new moments is, for me, you have the choice to do something completely new and make a whole new outcome, right? Yes. I think one of the best things you can do in a new moment is to give. Mm. And so I want to give you something. Okay. If I may. Okay. If you accept my humble offering. I have brought you an apple. It's indeed a gala apple. Okay. And it is a uh, crisp and strong. Apple symbolize sweetness, hope, prosperity. And in a particular culture are known for their strength and durability. Mm. And I see that you represent that for me. Thank you, brother. Right. Yeah. I think when I see that, I think uh, pingguo, uh, I say, say uh, apple in Chinese. Uh, so I just say, xie xie ni de pingguo. Uh, so, uh, thank, you. thank you for my, uh, thank you for the pingguo. Thank you for the apple. So for people that don't know you, you are one of my greatest inspirations in, in this other person. I wanted to ask, how would you describe yourself? Relatively new husband. We're 10 years in. But 10 years <laughs> yeah. new? Yeah, it's, it's still new. It's still new. There's still goals to get. Yeah, so learning husband, um, you know, a father, um, proud father, happy father. Some, you know, oftentimes because of work and travel, absent father. Um, artist, um, exchanger of cultures ideas, goods, and someone who, who just uh, wants to be better and help others to be better too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this is, a, this is primarily uh, many entrepreneurs watch, mm -hmm. what can you share a little bit about your business and what you've been able to create and how culture is integrated in that Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I, um, I didn't, I didn't, I, I was raised, I was raised around entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it at the time. My dad is one and many of my dad's friends mm -hmm. and then other members of our family too. So I was kind of raised around it. And, um, my parents have always been very supportive. And for them, it was, you can do whatever you want to do but just do it with excellence. And you know inside what that means. Yeah. So, and because you know inside, other people will know if it's done in a way of excellence. So no, no matter what you do, do it high level excellence. So it didn't matter what I wanted to do, yeah. but it had to be good. Yeah. You know, some parents will push the kids into certain directions. My parents just produce, they just push me. What do you like to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, do it high level, mm -hmm. be diligent self-controlled, you know, uh, don't slack, finish what you start. Yeah. Um, what, what did that do for you? Well, you know, um, it, it made me, <laughs> it made me better myself, but it made me also think, oh man, like they really support me. I can't, I got, I got to do the right thing. I remember, you know, I, I, I do art and I remember how to art like drawing, drawing. I, I'd say, I'd say I'm, you know, with the ink and the, the, the graphite, I'm nice with that. All right. Yeah. Nice with ink. Yeah. I'm nice with ink and graphite. 
and from there I can, you know, I do other stuff too. I, I painted, painted murals, you know, uh, you know, design clothes. So I'll, as far as design, because I can draw, I, I can, because I can draw, and because because I draw, I know other people draw. You know, I'm I'm in that space, right, okay. and other people would design, and so I'm able to, you know, craft ideas. Uh -huh. But my dad, my dad um, bought. I, I, he knew I wanted to draw, so he bought a, um, a compressor and an airbrush machine, okay. an airbrush gun. And I remember using it, but I wasn't so good at it. And, you know, I, it, it basically ended up in the uh, closet. But I still think about that. I'm like, my dad bought me that airbrush gun, and I didn't go the distance with it. It still was in my oh, mind. Wow. Yeah. And he invested in you, kind of. Yes. And he didn't ask for, hey, where is that gun at? But he, everything that I wanted to do, he would say, oh, you like that? Okay, let's do it. And he, they always wanted me to do the stuff at a high level. So that pushed me. And then I worked with my dad and um, he manufactured um, chemicals and stuff in bottles, bottles and jars. And my brother and I had to do the quality control. Like we were, you know, in the warehouse mm -hmm. doing quality control. And I remember when my dad, if we missed something, and let's say the cap wasn't on, and the ceiling didn't, yeah, he'd go and deliver these like 10 pallets, and they would take the box and turn them over. And if something leaked out, let's say they would just, you know, in the warehouse, take the boxes. If there was like liquid stain, yeah, to send the whole thing back. So my dad driving, or well, my dad's driver is driving back an hour and a half, and that look that my dad would give us when we come in the house, when he come in the house, it stayed with us. So for because of that, attention to detail and doing things in a very diligent way has stuck with me, you know. And so, and I know things usually end up taking longer and costing more. That's just what it's going to be. It's going to take longer and cost more, but you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, because of all these things, Entrep like like business wise, where it makes sense, yeah. it doesn't always make sense initially. You take a lot of L's. Right, that's right. You have to learn how to take L's. You got to learn how to do it until you become very good at it, which usually in your business plan, it doesn't account for the learning curve. You know, unless you have someone who's done it before and can already tell you or help you. But nah, you know, a lot of things that I've done, even though my dad's a manufacturer, a lot of things I've done, it took a lot longer and cost a lot more. And it didn't make sense. I went to business school. It didn't make sense because it just, but over time it makes sense. Like yeah. in the next, but you'll spend a lot of time. So for me, doing the business now, I do things that I like. And I do things that inspire me because that will help me to continue to go the distance with it to make it come to fruition. So whatever it is, you don't, I don't get into it for a quick buck. Mm. I get into it so that when I've touched it, it's memorable and it looks fly, it's functional, and people get a sense of joy with, from reacting or interfacing with whatever I've done. So for me, in business, you know, and I've, you know, that's what I do. If it's product, well, I'm not going the cheap route. I'm not gonna, go, like, no. It's gonna be- Standard. Standard, and it's gonna be, if you put whatever it is next to something else in the same category, mm -hmm what I've touched is going to make people go. It's going to, it's going to elicit a double take and a, it's got a double take and a smirk. Yeah. Like, hmm. Okay. You know, whatever it is. So that's my outlook on, on, uh, uh, business and entrepreneurship. And my dad told me, there was one time I got, I kind of, I kind of got disillusioned back in college. I was like, dad, I'm doing this degree. Like it won't even make me money. Like, mm. People, you know, doing business, a lot of them drop out of school. He says, son, school is going to teach you how to stick with something and how to learn. That's what, what you're learning is going to change, but it's going to teach you how to stick with something and how to learn. And you got to do that so you can make something that provides service. Mm. If it's just for the money, you'll take the shortcut. Mm. If, you, if it's for the service, you will stay and the money will be the side effect. So that's how I approach it. Money is the side effect. Happiness is a side effect. That's fly is a side effect, but it's because you stuck with it and you did it right.
So I stay in, I stay in a, in a narrow lane. I don't branch too far. Mm -hmm. It's a narrow lane of, you know what I do. You know, and it's based on, can I provide service and can it be fly? There's so much that comes up when you talk about that, actually. Um, but the biggest thing I get, the biggest thing is, wow, I wish I had learned that lesson when I was young. You're still young, brother. <laughs> I'm still young, absolutely. You're right. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm just now, let me say, I'm just now truly coming in contact with the power of everything I do matters. Mm -hmm. Like it materializes, it builds. Mm -hmm. I, I was listening to James Clear and uh, he said, and he wrote Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. He said, every action you take is a vote towards the person that you are creating yourself to be. Have mercy. Hey. It's so small, but it's huge. So when you were talking about how it takes longer, it does, and it's also, it's, I mean, it's for the product itself, but mm -hmm. it, as I see it, it's for forging the person that you're becoming more, almost more than anything. Mm -hmm. And that person you're becoming is going to outlast that foundation of you is going to outlast all these things that get a sale today. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just, I get this, the longevity, sustainability yeah. and the power of what you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that's clearly conveyed to people, but every, everyone learns in their time. Yeah. yeah. And we're still, and it's, and it's a constant thing. Yeah. It's a constant thing. Last thing on that, there's a this is an author named James Allen. He wrote uh, "As a Man Thinketh," mm -hmm. and his and I think it's his one of his early books, "Byways of Blessedness." He said, "Some people think the small things they're too big for to do the small things." And he mm -hmm. basically alludes that actually the small things are too big for them. Have mercy. And I'm just collecting. You see, I'm getting these sources, and I see it, I'm, and I'm 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 integrating. You know, Thank when you. you. When you said that, some people some people think they're too big to do the small things. I have a, an example of someone who I've seen who was very, very big mm. financially, and he was doing small things, and I couldn't believe it. Uh, and, it and it impressed me. When I saw him doing it, I said, I, I got to go harder. Mr. Allen, Mr. Bill Allen, from uh, the founder of New Black Wall Street in Stonecraft. Okay. So In Georgia, yep. Yep. So we, um, the Embargo guys and I, had the opportunity to open a, um, you know, a storefront in that marketplace. And we went in there, very, very beautiful. You know, this gentleman had buys a lot of, you know, he's, hey, so you can't, he doesn't, he's very classy. He doesn't, you know, you won't see him with any chains on. He's an older gentleman, of course. very classy, you know, nice, modest car, clean jacket in the, in the you know, hanging up in the back, you know, just yeah. those details. But this guy who has, Multi, 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 times multi, times multi, millions. Multi. Is in the marketplace with a paint roller. <laughs> painting. Yeah. Putting the details on, you know, some of the storefronts. <laughs> I said, okay. When I saw the level of detail, you think, okay, someone like that, he's not going to be in the lab like myself, like doing all the grunt work. No. When I saw him doing that, I said, oh, okay. I got to go harder. I got I to be that much more dialed in. This guy who has this whole complex, has people on the payroll doing it. He's out there painting little details, has the swatches picked every single swatch. We went in there to the paint something. He said, no, 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 no. That's not what I had envisioned. We're going to keep it. So, okay, bet. When I saw that little detail, the small things, I said, all right, you know, like when you think something, you think, okay, I let me get my assistant to do that. Let me get that. I'm not saying micromanage, but I'm saying to get into the micro details. He was in it and I, and I, I loved it. He has a hotel. We, we were able to stay in his hotel for a few nights. He, all the rooms are different, you know? Mm -hmm. He's picked all the tapestries himself. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the details, mm -hmm. you know? I just, mm -hmm. I love that, the small things. And sometimes in our culture, we think that, oh, I'm 
I'm, t- I'm, I'm big. I'm shy. I got my entourage. They'll do it. I don't got to do that. Thing. I'll paste one here. Throw some bread. You do it. You know. <laughs> you know, you said that. I know we keep zeroing on the small things. It's so big. Yeah. I got a uh, Dwayne Lang, a masculinity architect behind the camera. Hey. So he, he works with a lot of men dealing with women, masculine energy, relationships. Yes. Dynamics. And so one thing. Shout I, the big D. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. One thing he made, I, I thought about in terms of interaction with women, you talked about your wife and I'm sure you've had your fair share of relationship experiences. It's the, it's those small things with women that go so far. It's when you remember that little detail that she said one time at 2 a.m. looking out the window and you heard it. She never said it again. Mm -hmm. And you go, I heard you say that and I did this. It's those small things that really give you access. And it seems universally to me. Yeah, it's not, it's not like, I wanted to do this big party for you. I mean, it's, that's great, but it's a small thing almost speaks louder sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe we remember those. I, I, I still struggle with that. <laughs> yeah. My wife's like, I didn't want all that. I just wanted this. And I'm like, well, I'm going to give you this. <laughs> maybe we remember that. Yeah. Mm. So take me back to your early days mm-hmm. and how you first got you told you told me about your dad how you yes. came up there mm-hmm. how did you get to all right this is my brand embargo i'm gonna travel from la to atlanta to my product here and it's gonna look like this how did that come about okay so you know i while i am uh, the i guess I'm the Charles Oakley of the brand. Like I, you know, I, I have to, I do a lot of the grunt work, a lot of the, you know. I gotta say real quick, you go to any stand this man is at, your your aura and energy is like, <laughs> and it's, <laughs> your smile is so big and people are just drone. When I first came to your stand in uh, Miami Black Equity Con, yeah. you had drums playing, I ended up dancing yeah. And you had women twirling, and it was like a whole experience. And I didn't have, I didn't know what you offered first, but yeah. I was like, what is it? Let me, yeah. and so anyway, that was my impression. That's it, because it came up so uh, strong, right? Yeah. It's, it's rare, so. And it's not just me, it's, it's, it's a group. You yeah. Know? So that's why, that's why you saw that. If it's me, it's just one, but it was, it was my, my team. So that's it's why team. you saw that, that, you know, there's it's a energy. bunch of, a bunch of fields, a tourist field, a bunch of tourist fields hitting out, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Yes. So how, 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 how did this happen? So I, I, I go here. And if you say what, like, what is embargo as well? Yeah. Okay. So embargo spelled M-B-A-R-Q-G-O, M-B-A-R-Q-G-O. Embark, go. Embark on your journey. Go get that which you seek. Life presents embargoes in our path, which are a stoppage of movement of goods, persons, or things from one place to another. As resilient individuals, we must break the embargo, embark on our journey, Hmm. and go get that which we seek. So Hmm. one of the first times that I experienced like a kind of a stoppage, I was in fifth grade, and my family, I'm the oldest of three, so I'm in fifth grade, I'm 10 years old, we're headed back from Nigeria and we're in the airport. We're going to a different checkpoint. Mm-hmm. Passports are stolen in the airport. Quick, sleight of hand still. When you were we, fifth grade? I was in fifth grade. My dad had all the passports, went from one checkpoint, went to the next, yeah. and he had five, then he only had three. Okay. So someone had snatched them. And that was the first time I was like, man. <clears throat> We can't, you know, we, we, you know, we, my mom and dad were like, okay, well, we might have to stay here for a little bit. And I'm 10 years old. I'm like, no, we won't. We're just going to pray about it. 
And I'm like, you guys don't believe it? And my mom, my mom's face was like, well, <laughs> you know, I have to stay. But my mom had the foresight <laughs> to bring our birth certificates and they let us on the plane, got to Italy. And then she and my brother went and got, you know, emerging passports from the embassy and we were able to get back to LA. But that was the time that I kind of became a little bit obsessed. I love to travel, but I, came, I, got, I got kind of obsessed with how do people carry their goods? How do people carry their stuff in a way where it's on them? That young? Yeah, fifth grade. Wow. I started thinking about it. I didn't think about like a bag, but I right. was thinking, okay, where are you going to put your passport? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put your money? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put the stuff that you have on you? So I was thinking about that. And um, that's why, you know, the bags, uh. you know, they're made in a way where you can carry your important things, the things that if you lose while on a trip, it can mess your trip up. Mm -hmm. And that trip can be around the block or around the world, you know? So that's kind of what... Oh, oh, do that again, do that again. The driver's license, cards, clean. Yeah, passport slots. Yeah. Mm. So all the goods, you know, we have a, we have uh, different items in our collection, but they're... See if it works. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they, you know, you're able to like rest easy and let's say I'm on, the, I'm on that train from London to Paris, I could just do that and I feel confident and secure, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking about, you know, where my goods are at and, you know, do I got, it's having those, those, those things that are small, but can really change your life and think about missing, mm. you know, so I've had a lot of support with the brand, you know, um, to, to, to get the brand at different levels. But every, every new level is a new devil. Every new level is a new challenge, mm -hmm. you know? So um, one of the challenges now is trying to balance the things I got to do with family life, yeah. you know? So. And you have this piece? Yeah. And what else is included? So for what I've got to embargo right now, I got, I got, you know, this is the Toast De. Toast De? De, yeah, for two. Uh, Duh in French, you know, uh, toast de. So we have the toast de. We have Le Bouc Enchanté, which is the enchanted buckle. Le Bouc Enchanté. We, wow. Yeah, it, this, this, this is, we call it the, the quickest latch in the West. It makes, it takes the, uh, it gives the most saintly of women secular thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then right here, you see these are two cards in the Frubargo. Yeah, two cards in the Frubargo uh, collaboration. This fret. Thank you, brother. Like Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you keep, what's that you keep in your hat? Is that? Oh, this is a, a a $20 uh, Chinese bill. So what you see, these are the mountains of Guangxi, Guilin. So I, that's where I learned Chinese in this province. And this is the actual scene. So you can go to a peak and you see the actual mountain scene. So The attention to detail, man. Because yeah. but... sometimes, and my buddy Jordan, Jordan Sullen did this hat. And Jordan Sullen is the, the, the first one. See that? Yeah. And if you see, and Jordan, if you think I'm, a, if you think I've attention to detail, Jordan got this crazy one. You see the brand that's the H, Hatrimony. This is his new company, Hatrimony. Uh, Hatrimony. Hatrimony, and he did it with he and his wife. So like matrimony, holy Hatrimony. Uh -huh. You would need a little larger size because you're, because you're, because you're, your 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 hair. I do like Ti back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's not the that's not my style, uh -huh. brother. But Jordan and I worked on the. Uh, the, the Fruit Bargo collection. Uh -huh. And it has, what? Yeah, Jordan Detail, man. Wow. So I, I draw- a bow in there. Yeah. I draw inspo from uh, like, you know how they say like, stay around the campfire mm -hmm. to keep warm, you know? So I try to stay around other creatives, other people in business, other people in, uh, you know, whether it's martial arts or fitness or dance, just, you know, stuff that's gonna, challenge you and also give you inspiration so yeah that's one of my hacks just staying around the campfire 
One thing I learned from a um, conference I went to a while ago, he said environment is more powerful than will. Uh, yeah, because it will just, I, I agree. Will is powerful. Absolutely. You've got to have will. Uh, but environment, you won't even want to do it, and you'll end up doing it. Yeah. Whether it's good or bad. Yeah. So it's on a, it's like automatic to a degree. It's it's gonna raise it's gonna raise your thermostat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've been doing martial arts for like twenty years, man. Yeah. Twenty years. Yeah. You any good? I am uh I think I'm confident. Yeah, how confident you are. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good. I've actually, I've, I've, I've seen him in action many times. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Your martial arts journey, 20 years in, um, is a big part of you. Yes. And so is Dan. Yes. And okay. they mirror each other. They they're, they're, each they're, other. they're cousins, if not kissing cousins, dance and martial arts. A lot of people think, when they think dance martial arts, they only think what comes to them capoeira. first is capoeira. Yep. I could see it. You have rhythm, you have timing, you have flow, you're moving to the music. Um, but what you mainly see in Capoeira, Capoeira is also about, you know, uh, secrecy, you know, uh, mm -hmm. trickery, uh, as, and play as so is dance. But, um, you, what you see a lot of times is you see a lot of footwork where there's footwork on the ground and then kicks. There are hands, but you see that. Now, what for me in dance, the dance that I grew up with was poppy. Okay. Okay. So I was dancing since it became a big hobby of mine starting eighth grade. Okay. Eighth grade. So you were the man of the prom. So we didn't have prom, but oh. I was I was battling, you know? Okay. Like we were my crew. And battling that crew, you know? Yeah. And so, and competition, you know, impromptu competition, that's what it was. You got no dance class, it was battles, you know? So, um, but Pop has a lot of, a lot of hand work, you know, a lot of, a lot of arms. No, you have leg, but a lot of arms. And then I got into salsa, not of hand movement, not of control. You have a lot of ebb and flow uh. in partner dancing, okay? And so, uh, it's that marriage that I show, you know, a lot of the handwork, a lot of the controlling, a lot of the exchanging It's this one's going, this one's coming, you know, yep. a lot of high, low principle. So that, you know, a lot of control. And for me, when I'm practicing martial arts, I'm practicing dance, I'm depressing dance, I'm practicing martial arts. So. And probably when you're walking down the street. Yes, I'm thinking about it yeah. because you're walking and if you think left, right, left, that's one, two, three. Well, where that one, two, three is jab, cross, hook. That one, two, three is a salsa step or up rock. You know, it's a lot of the same yeah. things, you know. So. How, how has, because uh, I know you're so, I mean, you are, that's your, you live it as a lifestyle, dance martial arts. How has that impacted your life? in business, just having that practice so active? Well, um, that's one of the times I'm probably the most present. Why? I don't have my cell phone on me. So when I'm doing dancing, I can't, I can't record nothing. I'm, I'm in the moment, you know? And cause I'm dancing, I have usually, I, I like partner dancing. So I have my partner there, got to pay attention to them and to the DJ or the band and to the surrounding, you know? So, yeah, I'm present. So that helps you, you know, it's present and it also lifts your mood, you know, which are things you need in life. Yeah. And um, why is that? What is lifting mood? Oh, if you don't, if you have a horrible mood, you ain't gonna do nothing. You gotta have, you know, you if you have a horrible mood, you, which I do sometimes, you'll be inside, <laughs> <laughs> under the covers. Eating ice cream, you know, not getting out of bed in the dark. You know, I'm saying because I know I, I, I'm there sometimes, yeah. you know. But, um, you know, I sometimes have, have been on the worst day. Man, I remember one time on college, 
I had, I had failed this test. I failed the exam. I had an F. I failed the test. I'm like, man, my grade's going to drop. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I go out to the salsa club. I'm like, I wonder if I might be able to lift my mood. My mood lifts within five minutes. Huh. And I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. So, um, you, you lit. So that's an important part. Just movement. 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 Listening to music is usually positive. Everyone there is happy. Everyone there is, is building, you know, yeah. there's banter between men and women, you know, yeah. it's, it's a good look. Yeah. And then on the, and it makes you present, but it makes you present, lifts your mood, you exercise, you breathe, blood is flowing, you know, so it's, 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 it's a good look, you know, yeah. you sweating on her, she's sweating on you. Also with martial arts, you're exercising movement again, blood is flowing and it, it, it checks your ego. Why does it check your ego? Because you're swinging at him, they're swinging at you. You might get caught. Every time you get caught, it checks the ego. You know, you might, whatever you're giving, you're gonna have to take. You're slamming them on the ground, they're slamming you on the ground. That slam takes out, let's say you had a hard day selling, <laughs> going back and forth with clients. Interesting. You get slammed a few times, you, you're calmer. Yeah. You get hit a few times. You're, you're not like, oh, uh. What about that 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 project on Friday? No, no, not like you. You're like the deadline oh, approaching. Hurt. Yeah, yeah. That hurt. That, can I move? Okay. Yeah. Let me get back up. Yeah. You, me... you know you you kick a bull. It, yeah. That that pain snaps you into the present, yeah. and then you know the, the side effect that keeps you um keeps you agile. You know keeps you fit. Um. Keeps you prepared. Um. Keeps you presentable. You have a usually have a calmer mood if you if you get taxed enough. You get a calmer mood, <laughs> calmer mood. So I would say you ever had uh, to use it, like like really use it. Yeah, it I, I do. I have, but you know, if I have to. But no, I was, I was saying if you, if you had. I know you live a peaceful life. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, have you ever? Um, I think that. Everyone, especially men, are more peaceful when they're prepared. Uh -huh. The more prepared you are, the more peaceful you are, and the more you also, you know, like, because if it really, it's not a, if it really happens, I can go down, he can go down. I lose if I win. Like, camera's going to be on, capturing me, you know, like, yeah. if, yeah, like, in, for him not to come back, what has to happen? Something very dire, which is an issue. So it makes you avoid. Yeah, of course. I mean, and I, I mean, I, I'm in martial arts. The, the goal and the people that are the highest levels never do use it. It's really not. It's it's truly like my instructor says. If you ever get any situation, even when you get him. You get him to the point where he, you, he stops. And once he stops, you stop. Or if they're talking like, oh, what you want to do? Well, what, what, what do you want to do? And if he doesn't throw anything, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's all diffusing oriented. It's all de-escalating oriented. Yeah. And that, that goes into everything. Yeah. The, um, my, uh, one of my teachers, he's late, you know, he's transitioned. But he said something. He said, sometimes one of the most merciful thing to do is to back somebody out because they're out now you've de-escalated it you've knocked them out knocked them unconscious and because if you're not unconscious you don't gotta you don't gotta break something right you don't gotta tear something and before that happens sometimes the, if you can walk away you do if you think about all the techniques substance are about de-escalating you might have to escalate to de-escalate, yeah. you know, but you were about putting it down. Yeah. Sometimes you could put it down by walking away yeah. or by seeing before it comes and walking a different way, yeah. you know, or being prepared because you, when you're prepared, you also give off a, a aura yeah. or if it happens and you see, okay, that's the leader. Let me take him out and take their hearts, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. One of the most profound scenarios my seafood created in that context is he does security. Yes. And so. And your seafood was very good. I, I went to the class and he was yeah. able to, I, it was, I look, I look forward to one again. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Yeah. 
he talks about a uh, specific scenario where you, like when you show people grace, mm-hmm. especially someone that's tried to attack you to some degree, you might end up gaining a friend. Yeah. Because they see that you could have really hurt them mm-hmm. and you chose not to. Yeah. And just human nature is like, wow, you really spared me. Yeah. And so in that situation, you don't have to worry about messing somebody up where they're like, all right, when I come back, I'm going I'm to come with the whole gang and this and that. Like, yeah. just speaks to the escalating yeah. power, right? You bet, you bet on humanity. And you're transmuting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, this is all transferable yeah. skills, right? Mm-hmm. I, you know, they're both... And also in the dance and martial arts, I meet a lot of contacts, you know, I meet, I make friendships, uh, business. Um, one of the places that I love to dance in is in China. Okay. Like the, I love to go dancing in China because usually the people who are, they, they work hard and they play hard out there. And so I've made a lot of contacts in China just off the dance floor. Can you talk a bit about how you got to China and learn Chinese when you weren't raised? You weren't raised? No. Like nope, you nope, picked nope. that up as an adult. Yeah. Yeah, and, and how does that, okay. what is that about? People ask me, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny answer. So, it was actually our former president, Trump, who got me to China. Now, let me tell you, it wasn't that he actually said, Mike, I need you to go to China. No, what it was, was when I was in business school, the the, the show that we were always watching was The Apprentice. Yeah. And I thought, okay, like first, second, second, I was like, man, if I was on this show, what kind of attributes would I have to contribute to the team? You know, I didn't go to a school with a big, big alumni base, you know, like USC. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like a master car salesman, you know. I, you know, I, I wasn't really, I had been raised around a manufacturing plant, but I wasn't heavy in the business. And I said, what if, guys would think, man, what if I was on that show? And I had just learned, I had just learned Spanish the year before. You see Spanish too? See. Si. So I just learned Spanish and I thought to myself, what if, what if, what if I was intimately involved with the manufacturing capital of the world? Just trying, that's what I thought. But what if? In 2020, no, this was 20, this was 2006. Oh, and that old. It's 2006, 2005. I'm thinking about this. Okay. So what if I was involved? What if I was intimately involved with the manufacturing capital of the world that I can converse with them? Chinese felt, it was very, very far. It felt so far and so foreign. But I started to think, what if? And then, I remember I had went back to Costa Rica. So I'm in Spanish Costa Rica. I went back for another, uh, uh, basically, uh, quarter. Went back for another quarter. A little short of a quarter. And I did another course. And now my Chinese, my, my Spanish was very good. And I came back, my dad was like, son, you know what? If I was you, you don't got no, you don't have a wife. You don't have a job. You don't have no kids. You don't got no money. I would go to China. And I was like, Dad, China's so far. He said, you could learn Chinese. And he was just saying it. And I was like, but I had been thinking about it. He said that, and I thought. So I started to like do a little research, print out papers from different universities over there. And then I looked into the papers, and I don't find them. My mom's throwing them away. And it's like, what, what paper? The Chinese papers for the university oh, over there. Okay. So she didn't want me to go, so she just threw them away. And that gave me a challenge. I said, okay, I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so uh, then my parents kind of tricked me. They said, all right, hey, I was going to go. I didn't want to do grad school. I just wanted to go straight, straight on. She was like, my parents were like, you know what, Mike? Son, just do grad school. If you do grad school, we will pay for wherever you want to go for six months. We'll pay it. And I said, I bet. So I buckled down, got in. The program was supposed to be like a year and a, year and a quarter took me two years that I, I, I went I went the scenic route so I get done I said hey you know I'm done I want to go to China they said well you're done you can pay your way down what <laughs> that's what they did and I said you know what okay oh my I, god I wasn't mad I, I was I was amused and I said 
that was pretty good. Yeah. You know? So then I went and I um, sold a few things and I had pulled out a little bit of, you know, student loan from when I was in the grad school program. I went to Mexico. I was, I was, I was, I was trying to start the embargo line, Berto and I. I went to Mexico, went to Leather Capital, Mexico, just flew down there doing spring break. And I spent, I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start this brand before I go to China. That's before the crash. If you, I mean, if you, at that time, if you wanted a loan for 10K, just show the bank 1K in a business plan. That, yeah. Like money was able to get easy at that time. Okay. I'm like, oh, I'm going to start this brand before I go to China. And my homies are going to run it. I go to China. I mean, I go to Mexico. I spend the majority of the money for, my, for the schooling out there. So I got to sell things. And I bought a one-way ticket. The, uh, I think the week before I'm about to go, my dad's like, how much you got? I was like, $52. Dang. He was like, you can't go with that. I said, I'm going to go with that. He was like, no, you can't. I said, I'm going with that. The term. My, and my dad opened his drawer. Wow. And had his, uh, his tithe envelope for church. I was like, you need this. He gave me 500 bucks. I mean, so I started crying. And then my uncle was like, I want to buy your car. And then I go to some of my, my car and he was like, ah, he changed his mind. He's like, ah, I'm going to give you 200 bucks. So on the channel, it was 700 bucks. 752 bucks. Mm. And one way ticket. That's how I, that's mm. how I did it. One way ticket. Yeah. Burn the boats. Yeah. I'm not sure if I burned the boats now, but I burned the boats then. Yeah. Yeah. You got a wife and children now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's how you. That's how, I, that's how I got there. And then so I wanted to originally go there for just Chinese language for business. But while I was there, I made friendships. And they, I, I was able to, uh, a lot of people who really had my back. Why not? You know. And I wanted to stay to learn culture. Mm. And the more culture I learned, the easier it was to do business over there. And the more resources I had. I had, I had so much, I had, I had resources over there that I couldn't even translate to here. Like I, like the offerings that I was given business wise, you know, stuff that I was able to purchase or get done. I, I started saying, okay, I need to now start to level the amount of context that I have there with the context that I have here. And so that became looking, okay, how can I balance? I got a lot of contacts over there business wise. I need to balance them here. I need to start taking the ones in here over there to introduce and help. That's how you became an exchange of culture beginning yes. there. Yes. Um, yeah. That balancing, you know, because I said, you know, these, I got people who are over here at China who are like, Michael, I, it, for over there, they, their main religion is money, which is not a bad okay. thing. Not a bad thing. Channel thing. Some people say, oh, they don't, and these are Chinese people who tell me that's all oh, our religion is money. I don't think it's a, such a bad thing because what they say is, Mike, we've been friends together for a while. Let's make money together. Mm -hmm. Mike, what was your help? You know, what was your help? Each each hand. Like, let's, we've been friends together for a while. Let's together and make some money. And then money is the root of many problems in people's lives. Yes. A lack of, a lack of, a lack of, you know, but they're like, yo, let's build. And so when I take people over there, they're given that same reception, you know, but the, the balance, the same way I try to balance dance and martial arts and make them the same. I try to balance my contacts over there, contacts wherever I am. Let's, let's see how we can make money together. Yeah. What are your dreams? What do you want to do? Now, my, my lane is usually physical products, you know, so, you know, so that's, that's, uh, that's the exchange. Yeah. So I see myself kind of as a, a modern day like merchant of old. And you know, you mentioned earlier, not a merchant of not just goods and services, right? Culture, ideas. Culture. That, which is, I've never heard it put that way before. Yeah. That's what it is. I mean, you, you know, you, let's say you were in a factory and you're um, eating after or drinking tea. You now start talking about other things, you know, you start talking about like families, you know, like, you know, like what's the ideal vacation spot? You know, what do you guys do? What's the, uh, um, 
what's the ideal remedy for an ailment? You know, over there, I, I, before I used to only want dr to drink cold water. Yeah. Now I drink warmer water, you know? Uh, when should you eat this kind of food? Like, I remember um, Mike Taylor, he was like, oh, Michael, you know, don't eat mango. At, at, it's too hot to eat mango. Mango is a hot fruit. You're, it can make you have pimples. I'm not sure what, he, what he's talking about, uh -huh. but that's an idea that came, okay. you know? And I'm telling him and his daughter, hey, they're like, Michael, your teeth are so white. I'm like, well, this is how I brush them, you know? And like, I use floss. I'm like, I don't like floss. And I'm like, okay, well, try hydrogen peroxide. 50% hydrogen peroxide, 50 water, you know? Like, try it. I don't like the way it fizzes. But you know, we're, we're exchanging things. Yeah, you know? yeah we're exchanging things. So, and that's life, communication, yeah. everything, mm -hmm. us and nature, that what we eat, what we put out, what we, we say. And new business ideas come from those exchanges. Because yeah. business is usually a solution to a problem. Yeah. To start seeing new things. You know? Yeah. I want to just highlight as we wrap yeah. how you're, you were finally supported once you had committed and you were clear on what you were doing. Yeah. And without that, you wouldn't have got that support. If you would have waited for people to wait for everything to line up and everything to look like it's safe before just going, I, I could I could see that. I want to just point that out. As you go, sometimes you kind of create a vacuum and people will go with you. But that that first step, you gotta like it's like it's like when you see you know when you see like a car go past and you see the leaves kinda uh -huh. follow the car. Yeah. You gotta just go sometimes yeah. and have faith that the universe, God, and, and your contacts will, that there will be some con, some conspiracy with you, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. I want to ask in closing, what is the, some of the best business, business advice, which is really life advice that you have to share? Uh, go the distance. Go the distance. Go the distance. Go the distance in life and in business, go the distance. And um, don't just, you know, in business you're in there to make money, but um, money is the side effect. You're in there to serve someone or serve a need. Value. Yeah, value. and um, you know, and then the more we are in our society, our needs are a little more complex now because it's not just, it's not just, it's not always just food and shelter. And it might get back, it might get there. We we never know how things are going. It might get there, you know what I'm saying? But needs are complex. You must understand the needs and serve those needs and go the distance to serve it. And then, um, you know, when my teachers were scholar, when they transition, he said, Michael, it's easier to find investors. It, it's easier for you, if you have a good idea, to find investors, for investors to find a good idea to invest in. And I was like, what does that mean? But what I think it means is, if you really can get in, a, get in alignment with service, you know, what you're actually doing to help, you know, if, it will work out. So I'm going to this, this, and don't, that's the thing. People, we all, we are, a lot of times we, we will, we create, our culture is a creative culture, whatever is popping. I tell people in China, I tell people like in China, whatever is selling or hot in the marketplace, something we have the creator to co-sign, but we don't go to the distance always. Yeah. Any final words? <laughs> Jio, so Jio means throw oil on it. The Chinese phrase means throw oil on it. So Jio basically means go the distance, you know, like do it. Do it. Um, my mom always says a word to me every time on the phone. She says, Jisike, which is yeah. the Igbo phrase that means kind of the same thing. So Jio, go the distance, Jisike. Well, Jio, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your time. <laughs> I honor you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes. If you stuck around this long, I know you had to enjoy it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments, like, subscribe, and share it if you want. And you can watch YouTube's next recommended video for you right here.